Hi, Patho students. Welcome to part three of chapter nine. This is the last video for chapter nine, and we're going to talk about tissue repair and wound healing. After cells are injured and after the inflammatory response, then tissues must be able to repair themselves. This can happen by regeneration. And in the case of regeneration, cells will be replaced with the same type of cell. And sometimes there's absolutely no trace of the prior injury. Sometimes the injured cell is replaced with connective tissue, which results in scars or fibrosis. And sometimes cells will be repaired by a combination of regeneration and replacement. Before we move on, we need to define some terms. First of all, body organs and tissue are composed, composed of two different types of tissues. Parenchymal tissue describes the functional cells of the organs, like hepatocytes and the cells in the renal tubules. Stromal tissue are the supporting connective tissue, including vessels, nerve fibers, and the extracellular matrix. In our discussion of cancer, we've already talked about differentiation and proliferation. Differentiation is the process whereby a cell becomes more specialized in terms of structure and function, and proliferation means the cell is able to increase in numbers through mitotic division. So we're going to go back to the cell cycle for just a minute. Um, so remember that we have the um, geophase, which is where the cell is um, out of the cycle. It's not going to be dividing, and it's usually functioning um, and growing, but it won't divide. Um, and then we have the G1 phase, where... Um, the cells functioning, growing, and then the S phase where we're synthesizing the DNA. Then we have the G2 phase where um, we have rapid cell growth preparing to divide. And then we have the M phase, which is where the cell actually divides. <coughs> and then ultimately we're back to the GO phase or the quiet phase. Excuse me. Permanent cells like muscle cells, nerve cells, cardiac muscle cells re will remain in the resting phase of GO. They can't undergo mitotic division. So muscle and um, particularly important in cardiac muscle and nerve cells like brain injuries, they will be replaced with fibrous scar. Stable cells actually um, are, these are the ones that <clears throat> normally will stop dividing when growth ceases. However, these cells are capable of regeneration when they're confronted with the appropriate stimulus. And when that happens, they'll go into the cell cycle and move from GO into G1. These stable cells include the parenchymal cells of the kidney, the liver, some smooth muscle cells of the gut, and vascular, vascular endothelial cells. Labile cells are never in GO, or, and they have a very short G1, and these include um, skin, hair, bone marrow cells, etc. and these will divide and replicate throughout life. Cell proliferation is triggered by growth factors. Growth factors are small signaling proteins that increase cells and size and also increase the rates of cell division. The extracellular matrix is a network of extracellular molecules such as collagen, enzymes, water hydrated gels, and these provide structure to the cell. The extracellular matrix occurs in two basic forms. 
the extracellular membrane and I'm sorry, the extracellular membrane and the interstitial matrix. The extracellular matrix basement membrane forms the scaffolding for tissue repair. So it must be intact for tissue to be normally restored after injury. When damage is severe or persistent, the repair can't be accomplished with regeneration alone. In this situation, granulation tissue is formed followed by the formation of scar tissue. Granulation tissue is new, glistening, red, moist, connective tissue. I honestly think it looks a lot like um, steak or even hamburger. The tissue is rich with newly formed capillaries and the new capillaries tend to protrude from the wound and they look like little red bumps or granules and that's how the tissue got its name granulation tissue. So remember granulation tissue is often referred to as beefy red tissue. I think that's why I have the mental um, image of actual beef. The slide describes, this one describes the phases of wound healing during the fibrous scar tissue repair. First, we expect some um, blood vessel development or angiogenesis. And we expect to see the ingrowth of the granulation tissue like we talked about on the prior slide. Next, growth factors will direct fibroblasts to enter the extracellular matrix that is under development. And dense collagen fibers will be synthesized forming the scar. Then the scar will go through a process of remodeling. And in this phase, there will be maturation and reorganization of the fibrous tissue. As the scar matures, then vascular degeneration um, turns this highly vascularized red granulation tissue into a very pale and largely avascular scar. Collagen synthesis is important to the strength of the newly healed wound. Collagen continues to reorganize and to align until it's um, reached its optimum strength. So this is showing um, an a myocardial infarction with some um, scar tissue that's formed. And obviously we want our left ventricular wall to be of its optimum strength. Wounds can heal by primary intention or by secondary intention. You will see the primary intention, intention is also referred to as first intention. I always think of surgeons closing a wound with sutures or staples and of course their first and primary intention would be for that wound to heal in an uncomplicated way with little tissue loss. That's primary intention. Sometimes wounds must heal by secondary intention. We have to have wounds heal uh, from secondary or from the bottom up if there's a large tissue deficit. So imagine, um, is there enough is, is the wound too big that we can't pull and approximate the skin edges together? Also, if the wound is infected or even potentially infected, it will be left open to avoid an abscess. Healing by secondary intention does take longer and it usually results in a bigger scar. There is generally more drainage to deal with and overall, you, these wounds require more uh, topical medications, more dressings, more care. Burns and ulcers and wounds with larger surface area are usually managed by secondary intention healing. Wound healing is commonly divided into three phases. We have the inflammatory phase, 
the proliferative phase, and the maturation or remodeling phase. The inflammatory phase begins at the time of the injury with the formation of the blood clot and migration of phagocytes into the area. And then everything that we've already talked about in terms of acute inflammation, the vascular and cellular phases of inflammation. The proliferative phase will begin two to three days after the injury. In this phase, the new tissue begins to fill the wound space. Fibroblasts synthesize and secrete the new collagen and other factors that we need for cellular proliferation. Granulation tissue is produced and finally, a new epithelium covers the wound or new skin. The final phase starts about three weeks after the injury. In this situation, the fibrous scar develops, and then we have the continued remodeling of the scar by the synthesis of collagen, lysis of collagenase, um, enzymes, lysis by collagenase, I should say, until the wound has been, again, reorganized for maximum strength. Adequate nutrition is important for successful wound healing. Vitamin C is needed for collagen synthesis. Vitamin A is needed for new skin growth, for capillary formation and collagen synthesis. The B vitamins are important for enzymatic reactions and vitamin K helps to manage bleeding. The macro minerals, which include um, sodium, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, copper and zinc are all important for wound healing because they're important in normal cell function. The elderly actually experience a number of structural changes in their skin that makes it more vulnerable to chronic wounds like pressure ulcers, diabetic ulcers, and ulcers that are related to um, inadequate blood flow or ischemia. These age-related changes include a decrease in dermal thickness, a decrease in the amount of collagen in the skin, and as people age, the skin will lose its elastic properties. And all of these age-related changes are often compounded by years of sun exposure. In terms of wound healing, Elderly people don't produce as much collagen or fibroblasts. They do have a remodeling phase of healing, but it happens to a much lesser degree as we age. Additionally, the elderly population is more likely to have other diseases that negatively impact healing, like diabetes, renal failure, peripheral vascular disease, and malnutrition. This concludes the materials for chapter nine, and it also is the end of the module one content. So the, it's time to um, pull everything together for the first exam, and I will see you in our next Zoom session.